Well, hello, friends. I am so glad that you're here. I'm popping in today because I got some new stuff and I wanted to share it with you and do a quick little project. And yeah, so um, Arteza sent me a sent me some fun stuff again. I just love it. It's like um, when you see all these colors, it's like a kid in a candy store. It's just like, ooh. Um, but they sent me their watercolors. So um, I, I've just been playing and having fun. And, and um, I want to show you today uh, how I use watercolors because it's not typical because I'm doing mixed media. Um, so I'm going to show you how I use them and then show you a couple other things, some fun things. So anyway, so they sent me their watercolors and it comes in this box. This is the 60 watercolor. There's, you know, you can get, you don't have to get all 60 or whatever, but they, they have, the colors are amazing. And these are all the trays that you get. And I, I like the tube because I can um, put out just as much as I want or the colors that I want and play with them there. And let me show you what I, um, so I have these egg cartons that fold like this. And they're perfect for, I mean, there are, and I know Arteza has like palettes for your watercolors, but this for me works perfectly. And then it dries, it gets cracky and dries, but you just re-wet it and it's fine again and all is good. And this is like your little mixing spot over here. So I have a couple of these that I saved and um, I knew I would use it for something, <laughs> finally. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's what I have done with my, um, for my watercolors. Um, I just love this little thing. So anyway, so all these wonderful, wonderful colors and I swatched them because it's so helpful, especially when you're, when you're working with a new medium um, and you don't, let me get this out of the way. And you're not sure about, you know, how they perform or the, 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 um, depth of them and I I'm, I'm just throwing a disclaimer out there I'm not a watercolorist I use it in an untraditional fashion most of the time so take what I have to say with with a mixed media artist's kind of um, skew on watercolors but I love love the look of of watercolor and that modeled effect I just love it um, and I can I can kind of create that with acrylic um, and even with gouache, gouache is another product by Arteza that I love. Um, but the watercolor is soft. It's softer. Um, it's smoother. Um, it just, it has a different effect. And um, so these are all the colors that I swatched out and that I, that are in the box. These are the 60. And they're just, this just makes me happy. Color makes me happy. Um, so I got those and I'm going to go over these just a little bit more, but I want to show you a few other things that I got because I'm going to come back and we're going to do some watercolor work, um, and show you how I use it. And then we're going to create a project and I'll show you that. We're going to create this start to finish. And, um, but I want to go over a couple other things. Okay. So. Um, let me set this over here. I, they also sent me their water brushes, which is fantastic. Let me see. Let me grab. I'm going to grab a sheet of watercolor paper somewhere in my mess over here. Good Lord. So I'm, I'm going to be experimenting with their watercolor pad. And so I'm just going to pull that out real quick. But these are their water, these are probably the best water brushes that I've seen, that I've ever used. Um, I have a lot of different ones because they're nice to have when you travel. Um, and I don't typically will use them for um, watercolor. I'll use them with my acrylics and you know, it's probably not good for them. I know, I know, I know. But anyway, there's six in this set that I got. It's the um, six pack premium water brushes. Um, but the tips are amazing. So um, you've got a nice wide one. And the one thing I really do like about these water brushes is that to fill them up, the, the hole here is very wide, which 
in the past water brushes that I've had, they're t it's tinier. You have to put them in water and suck the water up. But I just put my water bottle up to the the hole there and just spray in, and it's it's filled. So um, I really like the water brushes. I'm excited about those. I'm excited to be able to travel with them. Um, but there's very very tiny ones. <clears throat> Six. There's three small, like fine, finer, finer point. This one is obviously you can see I've been using them a lot. This one's a larger tip point. Um, let's see. Then this is the medium, <clears throat> and then they have the flat tip, which is really nice too. So that's kind of nice and wide. This one's a little bit longer, so it's got a little bit of more movement. And then this is the smaller, smaller one. And so, love the water brushes and so great to travel with. Um, you know, you can just put them in your travel kit with some water in it and then you're, you're set. You can create and do some fun things. So anyway, um, I'm going to be using those and I have been using them for a couple days now and I just love it. So that's the Arteza water brushes. So they sent me those. It's like Christmas. Then they sent me this. So this is <clears throat> this is a, a 20 sheet pack of DIY frame mixed media frame paper, I guess is what you would call it. And so it is heavy duty, heavy duty, like seriousness. And it it the corners pop out. You they, they pop out and you fold it down to this. How awesome is that? I'm like, what? And it's like super, like super duper strong. The only thing I did when I folded mine in was I put a piece of double-sided tape down there. And um, this is, isn't that cute? That's some washi tape around the edge. But I mean, that was just for fun. I, I painted directly on this with the watercolor. Um, it would hold up to mixed media or whatever, but I thought, what a great way to be able to create and have, like, you know, a regular piece of art on a canvas. But like this. The cost is great to, I mean, there's 20 sheets in here. If you thought about buying 20 canvases, this is a 5 by 7 and they go up to, I think, 8 by 10, 11 by 14. I could be, I'll need to fact check that a little bit, but um, uh, I'll have... I'll have that information um, down below in the YouTube description box. But the corners, you know, come off and it's super easy to do. And you just, they get their directions on the back of this sheet here. And you just, like you fold your edge, like there's already a score mark and you just fold in those places. And I suggest that you fold all of your edges first, like fold them all over do all of the folding. Oops. And I'll just show you really quick how cool this is. I just, I think this is a great idea. This would be great for kids. Um, just, I mean, I, for me. <laughs> but so you fold in these edges first. And so this is where I did put some sticky tape here and here just to kind of hold those edges in. Because then what you do is you fold these over you stick the corners in here and here and then you oh see I didn't fold my edge I, see it's important to follow my own instructions fold all of the folds otherwise it's hard to do fold that in stick the corners in and then you fold it down and there's these little indentations right here that these flaps fit into Like this and like this and they fit right into these little just like that and you've got yourself a, I mean how easy is that that the cat couldn't be any easier so um, these are super fun so I'm anxious to get my hands on the bigger sizes because these once you get it folded down, you know, it's a 5 by 7 which is great, but I typically will create on a larger size. So, anyway, um, that is that. 
and um, I wanted to share that with you. These are, I mean, it's just super, it's really sturdy. So it's like creating on a canvas. Anyway, cute, cute, cute. I'm gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how I did that. Okay, so that is the um, DIY frame mixed media pad. In, and they come in different sizes. So let's see. And I will confirm what sizes they, they come in. Okay, what else? What other goodies? Okay, I got the this, I got the that. Okay, I think I'm good. So now I want to just show you quickly how I how I use my watercolor. So typically um, I'm using lots of different media and I'm putting matte medium down on my surface with papers and different things like that. Like the piece, like this piece that we're going to be doing today. So I've got papers in the background. Um, and watercolors really, for me, look best when they're on a porous surface. And as soon as you put the matte medium down or whatever you've got down, uh, like gel medium or that kind of thing, it becomes a non-porous surface, so it doesn't react the same. Um, it just kind of sits on the surface, and it doesn't it doesn't do all the fun, cool modeling and different things like that. And it tends to move around a little bit more. Um, so uh, I like to create on paper, whether it's watercolor paper or regular paper, a porous surface, and I like to use my stencils because, you know, that's that's what I like. So I'm going to show you what I do with the watercolors. I'm going to, I'm going to kind of, let me get this, I've got a lot going on over here. I'm going to pull my egg carton out and I'll switch this over here, get myself set up here, get my brushes. And I'm going to use the flat brushes right now, but let me just, I'm just going to grab the wide one real quick and I'm just going to dive in. The nice thing about this is that I can put in here the colors that I use the most um, and come back to them um, over and over again. So I can just give my brush a squeeze here in the middle and it gives me my water. And although this, these are dry because I've been working with them, they, they soften right up. And I get my color going and then I can come out here and kind of, you know, test it. And... I can get that wonderful watercolor. And if I want, if my, let's just say my color's too dark as I'm doing this, I can just add, squeeze my brush and just add a little bit more water. Of course, I do have a jug of water that I will rinse in between colors unless I want the colors to mix. But um, there's just nothing like that modeling that happens. And because you're on a porous surface, it tends to soak in quicker and so it stays in its place a little bit more. And, um, it just reacts differently. And this is a um, cold press, and so it's got that little bit of texture in it, which I love, um, from the paper. So I'm gonna rinse this out. And I'm going to use my stencil, and I'm gonna show you how I use, most of the time, my watercolors. I'll use them for, um, you know, a few other things, but this is how I use it the most, and so, let me grab, let me go into, what color do I want? Just so many colors. So I'm just going to mix, get my, get it nice and wet and juicy over here. Squeeze my brush, add that water in there. Okay. And then I'm going to come back in and just go right over my stencil. And you might think, how in the heck is that going to work? It does work, and um, it's not perfect, and that's the whole idea behind watercolor is there's that bleed through, and there's lots of things happening, and things are moving around, so I've got that initial color down. Now I'm going to come back in and grab a different color. I usually start with my lightest color first, and then I'm going to add in a little bit more, a little bit darker color, and a little bit darker. And I'm just going to quickly let it sit right here on my, my flower, my stencil, I should say. I'm going to grab a little bit of yellow, whatever I want, whatever, however I want it to look. And it's going to bleed out around the edges, and that's what I want. I don't want it to be too perfect. And then what I do is I grab my heat tool, 
and I'm hitting it with the heat tool and moving it around. Make sure you don't get it too close to your stencil if you're doing this to melt your stencil. You don't want to do that. And I'm just going to continue to kind of pull away and kind of set that initial pattern. Hopefully this will work on camera. Oh yeah. See now, you get this, you get the pattern, but not really. And that's what I love. So let me pull out the ones that I did. What do I do with them? Oh, right next to me. Hello. Um, but you can see that's a, it's pretty much the same type of thing where you've got that bleed through, you've got, but when you kind of set that initial um, dry time, it forms around the pattern of the stencil. And so this was all, this is all watercolor um, that I did and oh, it's just so much fun. And so then if I, if I feel like, let me grab the other pointy brush. If I feel like my edges are too distinct, I can come back in and just add in a little bit of color. Let's grab a little bit of this yellow. And I can come back in and maybe I'm going to give myself a little bit of water there and just kind of, maybe, just kind of bleed that out a little bit more. Um, however you want it. But you've got that initial, that design in there that I just love. So let's do that again. And I'll go with the smaller flower. And let me grab my color here. Let's see, what do I want? I'm going to go with this first. So, and this would not work the same way on a on non-porous surface. This is a porous surface. If it was a non-porous surface, that dry time is different and it's going to bleed out farther. And so it doesn't work the same way. So, I'm just going to come in here and just kind of grab some fun colors. Add a little bit of water with my brush. Okay, and now I'll do the same thing. And I'm just going to pull that up. That's amazing. Anyway. Hello! So then I can come back, because that's a really, really pretty detailed. So I can come back in, squeeze a little bit of water onto my brush, and kind of maybe just fan some of that out if I want. Make it a little bit more blurry. However whatever I want. But I've got that initial design that I just love. And this works with all different types of patterns. So this one I did with with the, this stencil is a very big stencil, but look at how pretty that looks. I just love it. So now, um, this is typically how I use my watercolors in my mixed media. So now I've got all these wonderful designs and I have lots and lots of pages of things like this that I've done. And what I, what I do is I can either take this and cut it out just as it is. But what I want to say is make sure if you want to do that um, to spray it with a, um, acrylic not just a fixative, I don't have my acrylic. There's a Krylon acrylic sealer that will seal it, seal it, so that that, that watercolor is not going to reactivate or move around. Um, but what I like to do is I like to just take it to my printer and make a photocopy. And I can dial the colors down, I can kind of adjust them a little bit, but it's pretty amazing how, okay, so. The colors are, are, I mean, it's just so, I just, makes me happy. So I, I will print them out and you can see like I've done here, I've started cutting out my pieces or I cut out my pieces. Same with the picture. I did the same thing with the picture. And um, then I can come and create this 
and I'm able to layer I'm able to layer my pieces on top of each other um, put my background down still get that watercolor wonderful watercolor effect and um, you know enjoy and then if I want to come back after I've got everything down I can come back now and just if I want colors to be a little bit brighter or something like that I can come back in um, with a little bit of this and add some let me grab add some color to it um, just know that this is a non pore surface now and it will take a little bit longer to dry and it won't model like it does and that kind of thing um, you'll see in the video that I come back in and I add some watercolor to the background um, of this piece just kind of adding some color in there and it kind of beads up a little bit and it, it does some different things that it would normally do on paper because again it's on a non pore surface so there's a lot of ways that you can use your watercolor in mixed media so because I've put this top layer on here um, and this is watercolor I put some watercolors down here I need to now seal this again with a spray if I go back over it with my matte medium or anything it's going to activate that watercolor and um, I'm going to have a smeared mess so you want to be able to spray it um, with the acrylic sealer um, and seal it that that way it's it stays put um, let's see I think I covered everything that I wanted to talk about on how I use watercolors um, uh, Arteza is going to have a 10% off coupon available to you to use um, for if you're interested in any of the products that I am um, talking about today and uh, all of that information is going to be down below in the YouTube description box um, for you if you're if you're interested all right so let's um, a quick video that I did creating this piece so let's get creating